How's it going, guys? So, you guys probably heard of the story of Rabbi Akiva. I don't have to go too deep into it, but, uh, you know, I guess this is 2,000 years ago, you know, a person who, a Jew, who was living in, you know, in, this, in Israel during the Roman Empire, <clears throat> who was anti-religious, to say the least, and, um, yeah, was anti-religious, and then, um, at the age of 40, you know, uh, he started learning Aleph Pace, and he eventually became, he started learning with little kids, and he eventually became the biggest, one of the biggest Tzadikim in Jewish history, probably. I mean, it's Rabbi Akiva, right? We sing about him during, um, there's a song that uh, has his name, you know, for like Bomer, I'm a Rabbi Akiva, I'm a Rabbi Akiva, I'm a Rabbi Akiva. <clears throat> but, um, you know, guys, I mean, to become religious at the age at age 40, much less a scholar, and the biggest scholar who ever lived at age 40, guys, I mean, that's never happened, except for with Rabbi Akiva. You know, guys, um, now I want you to imagine, I really want you to imagine that, um, you know, somebody like a Dustin Hoffman, you know, the actor, Dustin Hoffman, I don't know, or a Larry David, or a Jerry Seinfeld, you know, pick a Jewish Woody Allen, right, pick a Jewish actor. Jewish comedian. Let's say actor. They're all actors, really. When you slice it down, right? I can keep going, but, you know, I'll just name those four, right? Imagine that one of those guys, at the height of their career, at age 40, you know, respectively, you know, let's say, uh, I think it was, um, you know, Larry David at age 40 or 45, let's say, was you know, one of the producers of Seinfeld. He was doing very well, right? This is before his show. I don't know, Woody Allen at age 40 already had a bunch of movies, and he was in movies, and he wrote movies, right? Jerry at age 40 was, you know, Seinfeld was the biggest show on television. Dustin Hoffman at age 40, I think he did... Um... I believe it was Kramer vs. Kramer or Tootsie, one of these movies that got like, either he was nominated or he won. Guys, imagine one of these guys, after reaching the height of their career, suddenly finds the Torah, decides that the Torah is true, and comes out on a press conference and says, ladies and gentlemen, You know, as that song goes, say goodbye to Hollywood. <laughs> I'm leaving Hollywood. I'm done. I'm done with Hollywood. And I'm going to go and, I don't know, study Torah and spread the word of Torah and maybe even become a rabbi. Ladies and gentlemen, Dustin Hoffman, Larry David, Jerry Seinfeld, Woody Allen. I mean, Jackie Mason was a rabbi, but he, you know, I'm going to exclude him for a second. But, like, big, like people who were, like, the biggest... Jewish stars you can think of. Ladies and gentlemen, today in Israel, um, as we speak, a modern day Rabbi Akiva, a modern day Rabbi Akiva, is being buried in Israel today. His name is Uri Zohar. He was arguably one of the biggest stars in Israel, one of the biggest movie stars in Israel, a comedian, actor, and I think around the age of 40, I don't know the exact age, but around 40, he was at least 40, he basically decided that he is going to drop acting altogether and focus and devote his life to Torah. Ladies and gentlemen, now you can come and say, well, you know, 
Israel's a small country. He was only famous in Israel. You know, he wasn't famous. He wasn't like a world famous guy. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand something. Um, like, Israel, in Israel, the climate against, you know, religious people, if you're talking about in the, in the, in the, um, you know, let's say the Hollywood of Israel or the movie, you know, the movie scene in Israel or the entertainment field, sorry, in Israel and the media, ladies and gentlemen, if, if, if people came out on American news, news stations and American media, on, I don't know, imagine somebody on CNN or even Fox News, CNN, let's say, even MSNBC comes out as, as much as they're like the way they behave is against God. But imagine if they all came out and said the worst things about religious people, about like Jews. Imagine if a Jewish, I don't know, what's his name, Brian Stelter or one of these guys, you know, like a Jewish broadcaster on CNN comes came out and said the most horrible things about Orthodox Jews. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, that you would say that's anti-Semitic, or I don't know, self-hating, right? Ladies and gentlemen, this has been done every single day <clears throat> by the Israeli entertainment field and by the Israeli media, basically probably since the time that Uri Zohar became uh, religious, if not before that. And it's only gotten worse. It's only got you know, go through the 80s and the 90s and, and up until today, ladies and gentlemen, it's only gotten worse. If you listen to what they say about religious people, these are Jews talking, you would literally, if it wasn't Jews, you would say these people are anti-Semites. If stuff like this was said in the media about religious Jews here in America, that person would be fired on the spot. And in Israel, these people get to keep their jobs and be prominent journalists and prominent, I don't know, personalities and actors and my friends. I mean, so now imagine for yourself a person in that environment becomes, leaves that environment, becomes against, you know, swims against, completely against the grain, becomes religious, not only becomes religious, becomes a big rabbi, and he does it at the age of at least 40, I think he was like 42 at the time. You know, ladies and gentlemen, this really hurt, hit me hard, not just because the person passed away, but, you know, recently I've been having, having some, I guess, personal challenges, like, I've been thinking to myself, you know, I became religious at age 31, or I came out to all of this, this culture, this everything, you know, what we call Yiddishkeit at age 31, and, uh, you know, it's just been difficult with the whole dating thing, it's difficult to, it's difficult to just keep stuff when you're, when you didn't grow up this way, right, it's difficult to keep, keep on keeping on, really, it's, it's hard, it's not easy, and I thought, to, I kept thinking to myself, you know, the Itzahara thoughts, you know, only if I became religious when I was 21, 22, 20, 24, Maybe I would get married earlier, maybe this, maybe that. You know, all these, you have all, all these what-ifs and maybes, you know. But guys, you know, now I, I, I look at this guy, I look at Uri Zohar. You know, and people tell me stories about, oh, Rebbe Kiva is 40. I was like, that's cute, you know, it's like a tzad, you're, you're telling me about tzad, the biggest tzaddik that ever lived. I'm not that. Hey, he became 40, and then his wife waited for him, and he learned, and then and he got married. And, okay, wonderful, let's stick to reality. But ladies and gentlemen, I guess we are in reality. The biggest movie star in Israel dropped his entire career and became religious at you know in his early forties, and became one of the biggest, most prominent rabbis in Israel, or at least cure of rabbis. I don't know about you know Gadol Hador, you know, the scholar of the generation, but he be, he became, ladies and gentlemen. You know how I know that? Because you look at his funeral, they're broadcasting live on YouTube, and I, I think it's in B'nai Brak? I don't know if it's in Jerusalem or B'nai It's in a religious neighborhood, and it's all Haredim. Ladies and gentlemen, again, imagine Dustin Hoffman, Larry David, Jerry Seinfeld, Woody Allen. Imagine they became Haredi, they dropped everything, became Haredi, and now you're listening, you're watching a video, and they say on the, you know, on the news, this is the fear we are in Bnei Brak, I don't know, or here we are in uh, Borough Park, let's say it's America, Williamsburg, here we are in Muncie at the funeral of, of, of uh, Woody Allen. 
Here are, we are in Borough Park at the funeral of Larry David. Here we are in, I don't know, Crown Heights at the funeral of uh, Dustin Hoffman. Or, yeah, you know, the old hell, it's in Queens, Cambria Heights. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I have, if anything, I'm inspired, you know, because I'm, I'm 41 years old. I'm at the age that they started. What they st- I'm at the age that they started. I started 10 years ago. I had a 10 year, uh, that he started, that we are. I have it, I have a 10 year head start. Ladies and gentlemen, I have, I have no excuses now. Mea culpa. I have no excuses. I have no excuses. I have no, uh, I have nothing to be sad about. I have nothing to be upset about. I have to keep going. If this guy started, at the age that I am at now, and he dropped what he dropped. He dropped a lot. I thought I dropped a lot. Hmm. He dropped a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he dropped a lot. He he was carrying whatever he was carrying, and he just dropped he dropped it on the middle of the road and said, screw it, and he went the other direction, the right direction, at, at age 40, you know? And, um, I had a 10 year head start on him. So now I just got to keep going. Got no excuse, my friends. And for those of you who want to start, I would say it's never too late. You know, it's never too late. It's not easy. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It's not easy. It's very hard. It's very difficult. (laughs) Believe me. You know, to be consistent and all that kind of stuff. Learning, learning, davening. It's, it's not easy, you know? There's things that are ingrained for 30 years that, like, are, like, you know, Kabbalah, we call it klipas, you know? They're just ingrained in you. Um, but, yeah, guys, I mean, if this guy started when he started and he became, again, he became probably the biggest, him, there's, I think, of two people, him and, and, and uh, what's his name? Zamir Cohen. And, then, and another, and, and, and uh, what's his name? That other rabbi, I forget his name. Basically, he's one of the three main cure of rabbis in all of Israel. My friend Rachel is saying, "What's reality? If Woody Allen became Haredi, I'd say Mashiach is going to be revealed in the next five minutes. If Woody Allen became Haredi, Mashiach will be revealed in the next five seconds." <laughs> you know, my friends, life life is interesting. Life is funny, life is interesting, you just really never know. Not only you never know, you you always have to understand that there's nothing more powerful than a person's desire. And if a person wants to, at age 30, at age 40, at age 50, to do X, Y, and Z, to go in this direction, Hashem is going to help him. If a per like if he really dedicates himself, if he really says, you know, I'm 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 genuine about this, I I really, you know, I'm in it for the long haul. You know, I remember a relative of mine in the beginning. This is a person who used to be religious, or more observant, told me, you know, I also went through that phase, and I said, you know, this isn't a phase. I'm I'm in it, you know, for the real deal. This was at that time. My friend Rahel says, embedded in your content is the implication that you're not far enough ahead. I don't know why you think so. Um, many reasons, which I won't go into now. Many reasons. I think, uh, without getting into too much detail, I think the... How should I put this? The Shidduchim process, or the way that people have been approaching me in that realm, in that, in that sphere, um, has led me to even think or believe that I might not be religious enough, right? As much as whatever I can, can consider myself or whatever level I think of myself, where I may be far enough ahead, maybe, um, uh, maybe other people don't agree, you know? Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but, um, it doesn't really, you could say it doesn't matter what they think, right? Fine. But if you're constantly 
seeing the same kind of, you know, you, I'm a pattern seeking person. If you're seeing the same results, same pattern, where people, just be frank, you know, trying to set me up with girls who are not religious, I don't know, in the hopes that I'll save them? I don't know. I don't know what the reason is. <laughs> we'll go into that. I started thinking to myself, am I, am I religious? Am I, are people, am I considered, should I consider myself a religious person? You know? Oftentimes in life, we, we, we start to think of ourselves in a way that people, other people think of us. You know? It's hard not to, right? You should say, well, well, who cares about what people think? Fine. I don't care about what people think. I really don't. But, when I'm seeing the same thing over and over and over, you know, I start to think, like, either, you know, there's a perception, or maybe Hashem wants something else from, else from me. Maybe, maybe Hashem wants me to go further, and then maybe the situation will change. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. But, ladies and gentlemen, I, I do know one thing. In the words of Dr. Evil, I don't know animals, but I do know this. <laughs> I do know one thing, um, now I have no, nothing to be regretful about, I have nothing to be down on myself about, I have, I also have no excuses, and neither does anybody else really, when you think about it. If you look at the life of this person, who's, who's being, you know, buried as we speak, um, yeah, my friend Rahel saying, I think Shaduchim are not up to us, you can only be you, I don't think you need to adjust yourself to the place in your path, I'm not, yeah, listen, I agree, I don't have to adjust myself, um, but, you know, again, it's just a barometer that I've been kind of using, you know, just inadvertently, anyway, my friend says, trust your heart, you're going, yeah, thanks, thank you, listen, I hope so, it's not a shame, but, you know, my friends, if you need some inspiration, if you really need some inspiration, if you're feeling down in yourself, and I mean this in a good way about Rabbi Uri Zohar, read about his life. Read about the person's life. And um, you'll have no regrets. You won't feel bad about yourself. You'll be inspired. And uh, you'll realize that there are no excuses anymore. That's it. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.